What's going on, Train 2.0? My name is Jason. Um, if you're watching live, thank you. My goal is to help hockey players. Oh, look at that little bit. Stuff there. Okay. My goal is to help hockey players get better. Now, this seems obvious, but how I'm a little bit different is I personally put in a ton of effort and commitment and time into getting better. I did not get the results that I felt I should based on how much time I put in. What I found was that there is drone coaching, um, which is just kind of reiterated copycat coaching advice that doesn't actually mean anything. As a result, I didn't actually improve on the things that would make me a successful hockey player. Now, I call these successful hockey players or these players who are in the NHL, I call them wizards. Now, people sometimes take me literally on this, but maybe I am meaning it literally. So I call these players hockey wizards. I say that they have magic mechanics, magic formulas, and hockey hypnosis to literally dominate their opponents, to have complete control over their opponents. So my goal isn't to teach hockey skills or to teach drone coaching advice. My goal is to create a system which helps any player who's simply willing to put in the time and effort, not the ones who bumbled into the magic formulas, magic mechanics, and hockey hypnosis, give any player the tools to be a hockey wizard that is my that's how i'm trying to help and sometimes i do i uh create thought prov provoking videos to get people to think about that so that's my mission that's what i'm doing and if you're watching it my guess or this is that my guess is that you're curious about how to make a magical transformation in your life too. Now, today we're going to talk about Sidney Crosby being bow-legged, because I got a phenomenal email um, from one of my followers on YouTube, and this email was asked a very, very interesting question, one that I hadn't thought of, and that question was... Um, something along the lines of some drone coach somewhere told his kid that because he wasn't bow-legged he would never be a good hockey player so, <laughs> something like that <laughs> the stuff i hear <laughs> is ridiculous so um so he said you know is this true is this true because he's noticed that um a lot of the top hockey players are bow-legged and i'm thinking back probably the best-ish hockey player that I played with, um, he was extremely bow-legged, and he was extremely agile and a very, very good puck handler. And so I was, that kind of stuck in my head. Um, and he's playing in the AHL right now. I think he's the captain um, of his team. And um, and so he's got these... Uh, so he's mentioning, like, Eric Carlson, uh, Crosby. Uh, I should go through the list here. Let me go through the list. Give me a second here. Tyler Sagan, Maxime Finneganov, Phil Kessel, LeCavalier, Niedermeyer, Sergei Fedorov, Mike Medano, Mike Gardner, Bobby Orr, Marion Gabbard, all bow-legged. Right? So I thought, huh, that's interesting. <laughs> that's not something I knew, really. Now, what is bow-leggedness? Um, what do you guys know bow-leggedness to be? And right now, as I'm talking, what do you think? Those who are watching, you might want to ask now. I'm going to grab a glass of water. You might want to comment now. What do you think about bow-leggedness? Is it related to skating skill? Is it, as this drone coach said, uh, if you're not bow-legged, you're screwed? <laughs> or is there something else? You better comment quickly because I'm going to grab some water. I'll be back. So, is there a difference? Now, you might want to comment right now, 
because otherwise I'm going to go on a rant that won't answer things for a while here. All right, ranting it is. Um, Crosby, Maxim Ifeneganov, Sergei Fedorov, all these guys bow-legged. Now, here was, lets you wide track e easier, the fastest and most agile players on my team, one of the best skaters. On, uh, scene walks pigeon toe, interesting. Very interesting. So, here's what I thought. I mentioned this, okay? I mentioned, I thought, first off, these things are very, very messy. This is like our fellow who came on the other day and said, you know, all people with short sticks are better, right? There's like pretty clear mathematical relationships um, with such things as baseball players and eyesight. People who have the best eyesight are predicted to be the best hitters, period, okay? Um, so, so if you have better than 2020 eyesight, there's a very good chance that you can be a, an MLB, um, you know, star. Literally, the people with better eyesight are better hitters, hands down. Um, and a good book to read, if you haven't, is called The Sports Gene. Um, basketball, a good predictor of whether you're going to be an NBA star or not, has nothing to do with height, has everything to do with wingspan. So the length of your your arms. Um, endurance. There's a genetic anomaly um, that is some sort of like a tweak of 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 uh, cross country skiers in like Finland or something. They have some sort of genetic anomaly which allows them to have a way higher. Uh, the, tr the technical term is hematocrit, but way higher red blood cell count. So all these things are like, these, <laughs> all these things are, 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 are mathematically shown. Now it's, it's hard to do that in, in, in hockey with bow-leggedness. So it's kind of interesting to say like, what is it? What is causing this? Um, one thought I had was, does bow-leggedness Result from proper skating, or does proper skating result from bow-leggedness? Interesting, right? Um, people always mix up in hockey because most people are drone minds. They have the hive mind mentality. You know, plug in and and just take the hockey information in and then re-spit it out. Right? This is drone hockey where they just spit out the same stuff that they've heard, right? Um, so, so thinking about the inverse correlation of things is not something that most people can fathom, right? So is it that a bow-legged skater or bow-legged player is a good skater or is that a good skater becomes bow-legged? Because, here's what I've realized, is that every time you push off properly with the magic mechanics of the wizards, Okay, which I've been diligently researching for my members, skating around on the ice, and I'll tell you that story another time if you're interested in it, um, rebuilding my stride from 25 years of nonsense, really strong, really fast nonsense, but not wizard level. So rebuilding my stride, realizing, hmm, something different happens with a wizard stride than a normal stride, your standard power skating stride. There's something different, okay? That difference is a, is, is, has to do with the hip scissor first. And when you have that hip scissor motion, there's something that fires a little bit more, something called your glutes. I think Pavel Datsuk was pigeon-toed. Someone looked that up, tell me. He had like a twitchy walk. He was the boy with the twitchy walk, anyway. Just thinking here, just riffing. Okay, so here I am on the ice realizing the gluteus maximus fires a lot more when you skate with the magic mechanics. Could it be, think about it, could it be that if, if a drone power skating coach is trying to teach Sidney Crosby to skate and Sidney Crosby, um, you know, was bow-legged, 
it prevented him from learning the drone way of power skating and he happened to learn the proper way the proper way to skate the, the wizard's way of skating the magic mechanics of skating could that be the case that his bow-leggedness prevented him from from getting screwed over by the drone coaches or did someone magically teach Sidney Crosby the correct skating and that it formed muscle activations, which caused him to be bow-legged? Now, I'm sure people are going to go, oh, it's all leg angles. It's nothing to do with muscles. You sure? You sure about that? I'm sure in some cases, yes, right? It is leg angles, but couldn't you make yourself bow-legged, right? Could you? You might be able to. So on Tuesday, I'm going to open this up for questions here or I'm going to get to some of these questions here, but on Tuesday in the members' seminar, if this is true, I don't know, if this is true, I'm going to go over the off-ice exercises, the things you'd need to do off-ice to create bow-leggedness in yourself to skate like a bow-legged player. I'll show you how to do that. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about why that's important. And I'll also dive deeply into the magic mechanics of the wizard's skating. So that's what's coming up. I'm going to check out the questions. Fire away. If you have any, you might want to ask them now because I don't have a ton of time today. Um, okay. Thank you, Daniel. That the audio is much better. I appreciate that. And I've been told <laughs> to, to kind of stay still. To, to If I want to bring the energy, move my hands a bit more rather than this. Because the poor microphone is trying to adjust. Okay. Uh, not bow-legged, but he still walks weird with his toes in and skates so efficiently. I don't know if that's the same thing. Those are different things. Ish. So bow-legged refers to the angle of your your femur and um i guess tibia and fibia right so so kind of like imagine if i'm standing here if i'm standing here rather than standing here like this i stand like this oh i might have just given you a hint <clears throat> so um let's see here uh, so he might be bow-legged and walk with his toes in. That might be the case. I don't know. Or he learned the magic mechanics and this is all irrelevant, an irrelevant argument. I don't know. Uh, what do you guys think? So next question here. Um, so yeah, so he, so, so toes in or toes out is different from being bow-legged from what I understand. Correct me if I'm wrong. If you're skating bow-legged, maybe it means you're putting a lot of pressure on your inside heel. Some kids do that when you teach them to push on one leg. Frank, you might be onto something there because that might have something to do with the magic mechanics of the wizards that I've been finding. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, background behind me would be good. Apparently, you can get... See this wire cast thing in the... There? This software is apparently quite good. Um... And you can create your own custom background. So that's for uh, for one day. Um, or maybe I'll just get like a, a big curtain and just drop it behind me. Uh, my feet are always turned out. Is that good or bad? It's hard to say without some context, Brett. Um, I'm, it's hard to say. It might be good, might be bad. Uh, what are your thoughts on wide tracking? This kid on my team has a super wide stride, which limits his recovery a bit and looks a bit choppy, but he's one of the fastest players in my league. So my guess is that 
well, here's the thing. Wide tracking versus non-wide tracking is, regardless of, let's just say this. Let's say you have the magic mechanics. Whether you choose to wide track or not, you're going to beat someone, hands down, who doesn't. More, uh, more or less, unless they're like the, the, um, like the absolute fastest. Okay, so if you have the magic mechanics, you can choose to wide track or not. You can choose. And you'll still be faster than 90% of everyone else. And power skating coaches, I see clip after clip. People, is this the magic mechanics? Is this the magic mechanics? Is this the magic mechanics? No, 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 no. It's not. It's close. Close here, close here, close here. But no, I haven't seen it. Um, in... A skating instructor yet or maybe I have and maybe that might be Boris Doroshenko check him out um, really agile uh, so the question is how do I how do I analyze players movements and mechanics <laughs> in highlights. All right, well, I'll tell you how it started. When I was around, uh, let's say 16, and YouTube, I don't know, when was YouTube out? That's when it started. Um, and I just obsessively wanted to know about Boris Doroshenko, Austin Matthews coach. Look him up. I'll throw his name in here. Or a link or something. That's the Boris. Um, Okay, sorry. I'm asking. I'm answering the the movements and mechanics in highlights. So unfortunately, you gotta like spend a lot of time on this because I've spent. You know, you say ten thousand hours is the amount of time it, to be able to analyze mechanics. I've done the ten thousand hours. So you can pr start practicing. But my suggestion is check out the membership area because as soon as you start seeing the magic mechanics, you won't be able to unsee them. And you don't need to become a kinesiologist or an expert to and, and break down the mechanics yourself. You just need to learn the 20% of things to do to get you where you need to go. How do I analyze players' movements and, and mechanics and highlights? Listen. I have studied, I've got on my computer so many movement analyses, it's not even funny. I've got hard drives and hard drives piled away where I've learned these, where I've just simply, a guy, and this is going to sound weird, but a guy with boxers on, or let's say tight compression shorts, <laughs> is doing overhead squats and step ups. I'm looking at knee angle and I'm measuring whether their hip moves first or, or, or their spine's caved in or blah, blah, blah. So I've done this a gajillion times with my research. And when I walk down the street, I can pick out if someone's knee is, or foot is collapsing, uh, or if their right glute is not firing, if their shoulders are sore, or if their neck is sore. I can boom, 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 pick this stuff out because I've practiced again and again and again and again. So now when I watch a YouTube video of a highlight, I can look at it and say, that's what's going on. Right. Now, I couldn't do that 10 years ago. I couldn't. It's a, It's literally a skill that I've practiced, right? And there's not a lot of people... Like, I'm in the NHL of being able to figure that stuff out. Um, not in the literal NHL, uh, but I will be one day. You'll see. Um, now, that's how I analyze that stuff. So you can start by just thinking about everything related to movement. <laughs> Start looking up Ido Portal. I'm gonna look. I'm gonna type him in there. Ido Portal, because you need to think philosophically about music. You also need to think scientifically about mu movement. You need to understand uh, anatomy, physiology, um, 
you need to understand all of that. If you understand all of that, then you know you can understand how movement, how to how to quickly know movement mechanics and highlights. Unfortunately, most coaches have not done that. Um, okay, let me look here. What are the most effective times to use the open hip moves, aka putting your feet at ten and two? Well, Mr. Crosby uses it to accelerate. And the way he does that is if you check out my video where I talk about transitions and leaning, um, you're going to see how he uses his leaning to um, actually create acceleration. Um, so he uses that all the time. So, so two players skating side by side. This one's Crosby. They're both skating together. Crosby will just open his hip, boop, and 10 and 2. And the guy thinks, oh, I got him. But he doesn't because Crosby's actually able to accelerate out of it. I explain that in the YouTube video, um, transitions and leaning. Um, so that's one time, if you know how to use it correctly. The other way... Um, the other time is he'll use it when actually puck protecting. So if, if, a, if a guy is right on him, um, it can be used often as deception. Um, so, you, you know, you can make it look like you're turning to open to make a pass and then you 10 and two and then keep going the same way. So those are kind of the, the, um, the, the two times to use the, or is that three? I don't know. Three times to use the open hip um, maneuver. Can I do a Mitch Marner skating yeah, we'll see. Um, what specifically do you like about um, Mitch Marner? See, here's the thing: is is I, I get people asking me to do um, specific player breakdowns, and I do my best to to keep up. But each breakdown takes a lot, of, a lot of research time, and then a lot of like production time. You see, the new quali quality of the new videos coming out now, and you see that it's a lot higher. So these things take a bit more time now. Uh, so what specifically do you see? Because it might be explained by another wizard. Because uh, my guess is that Mitch Marner has wizard mechanics, and it's probably explained in some of my other videos or or partially explained. So I want to get you your information right away, and I'll look to look at Mitch Marner for that information. Um, but... Um, but if there's something specific, I might be able to speak to that right now. Uh, if I knew then what I would knew now, would I have made the NHL? Yes, without a doubt. Um, if I could coach myself when I was 17, I'd be in the NHL. Yes, 100%. Um, Elite, Nick has said, oh, sorry, Elite Hockey Life has said he realizes he's bow-legged and that's why he has the magic mechanics. Maybe that's why. That could be it. Um, why is, uh, Kevin, I'm assuming you mean the 10 and 2. Why is that more effective than crossing your feet? Um, well, I think it's because... Well, I think it's because you don't have to shift your your weight, so you can st so you can um, the open hips. Okay, so you can just simply pick up speed and move by leaning, so you don't have to disrupt your core. Okay, when you when you have to actually pick up your feet and generate power, this is one of these interesting things. I don't think you know. Here's the interesting thing. Okay. I'll tell you some of the science behind the magic mechanics. Uh, the, the science here is, is when I talk about at attentional resources, okay? Now, you're, you, we all know that your brain can keep track of seven things, plus or minus two. That's kind of commonly accepted. So your brain has limited attentional capacity. Now, here's why the magic mechanics are magic. Because when you use the smoothest mechanics that require the least amount of attentional capacity to keep yourself balanced and to keep yourself moving and generating speed, you can devote more of your attentional resources to evaluating the play. So for example, in a 10 and 2, I could either take a whole bunch of strides 
which literally requires attentional, re attentional resources because what I'd have to do is tell my brain, or my brain would have to tell my muscles to fire. So I'd actually have to move my feet to create movement. So I gotta use up neural resources to move my feet to get my movement. If instead I can simply shift my weight, do way less stuff with my body and preserve my attentional resources, then what I can do Somehow, what I said just triggered Siri. Oh, never mind. <laughs> so, if you get, if you, the magic mechanics are such that they minimize your attentional resources so you can devote more attentional resources to processing the environment around you. Okay? So, why are most, are all magic mechanics better than the other shitty mechanics that you've been, that, been taught or learned or whatever is because they minimize the attentional resources required to do things so when it comes to why is a 10 and 2 better than a crossover i don't know like the the, the crossover might be better for a certain scenario but if if what i'm trying to do is observe the play and, and read and, and and read my defender then i want to do something that's simpler which requires less actual physical movement um, so that I can preserve my attentional resources to watch my play, manipulate my opponents, blah, blah, blah. Hope that makes sense, Kevin. Uh, Vladimir's asking if you want to push from your heels more. Do you think it would be smart to profile your skate so it's a rocker to show your weight more on your heel so it makes it easier to push with your heel? Um... I don't really know enough to answer that question because I don't, I haven't tinkered with the rockering. Okay. What I will recommend, I've recommended this before. I'll recommend it again is maximum edge. Now someone correct me if I'm incorrect here, but maximum edge, I believe they are the company that uh, trains all the NHL trainers to sharpen skates. If you can get your skate sharpened by someone who has maximum edge, your life has been changed. Okay. Um, cause they have some sort of system. It's my, that's the magic mechanics, the magic system of skate sharpening. I don't know how it works. It's a, pfft, throw the skate sharpening wizards, right? I don't know how it works, but it, it'll change your life. Um, because they have a system that guarantees consistency. I don't know what it is. They don't talk about rocker. They talk about profile. So in terms of the the curvature at the bottom of your skate to say how much blade is on the ice. That's what they do. So I don't know enough to say whether it's rockered one way or not, but you do want to play with your profile and you do want to check out maximum edge and I should get sponsored by them. I'm not because I recommend them um, everywhere I go. Is the hip scissor like a weight shift? Yes, it's like a weight shift, but it's better. <laughs> Um, I don't think, I, I wonder if it's known outside of the people that I've learned it from, which is two, two people. That's what I wonder. Um, yeah, the Mike, like, here's the thing. Someone prove to me I'm wrong here, please. Um, but the only people who know how to profile skates are maximum edge. That's that's what I've come to, to realize. Now, this hypothesis is definitely something that you could tell me I'm wrong in. So bring me forth that evidence that someone knows how to do it better than maximum edge, and I will adjust my opinion. That said, I don't think any right now, based on my experience, no one knows how to profile skates. Um, unless they're maximum edge. So show me proof that I'm wrong. Um, yeah, because I don't, I don't understand the science. Maybe one day I'll talk to the, the head honcho, the master wizard of maximum edge, and uh, him and I, I can have him on to, uh, to chat. 
Okay, I gotta run to a game here. So if you have any questions, you might wanna ask them now. Just replying to some text and then I'm gonna have to head out the door. <laughs> So if you're watching now and you'd like to, and we've, we've discussed our Crosby bow-leggedness and you'd like to become bow-legged yourself, I'm going to show you exactly how to be bow-legged. Um, I'm going to show you exactly how to, to become more bow-legged like Crosby and maybe not quite to the extent of Crosby. But I'll show you how to be how to artificially make yourself bow legged, and then we'll also talk about the magic mechanics for skating. Now, FYI, in the membership area, I have something called the. Yes, Nick, it's in the members area. Train, it's train bot. Use train bot. That's the conditioning thing. That's what you need to know. Um, so, in the members area is something called the source code drills. And these source code drills are the drills, the drills, the drills that will help you learn the magic mechanics faster than anything. Literally anything. Um, and I don't say, I, don't, I used to say 10 times faster than everything else, but no one even teaches this. So how do I measure 10 times faster than nothing? <laughs> so these are the source code drills for the magic mechanics. They're in there right now. So if we want to talk about skating, they're in there right now. Um, so you can check that out. And on Tuesday at 5 p.m. Pacific, I'm doing my members webinar where I'm going to tell you literally exactly how to skate like Sidney Crosby, Eric Carlson, Connor McDavid, Jack Eichel. We've unpacked it before. Those members um, webinars are sitting right in the membership area. And on Tuesday, I'm going to explain how the bow-leggedness, how to make yourself bow-legged, how to train yourself to be bow-legged with the off-ice drills and exercises and if that makes a difference you can start making that difference so that's on tuesday so if you want to start right now you can because i have a seven day free trial and if you don't like it by the time you get to that tuesday webinar and the source code drills don't make you a shit ton better um and the quality of the information isn't up to your standards or you don't like my haircut because I was letting my hair get a little long for a period of time, <laughs> then just cancel it, okay? But if you're on right now, you might want to join in on Tuesday at 5 p.m. Pacific where we're going to talk about this shit in depth and sorry for swearing and you will not be disappointed. You will be, ex you will be amazed and astounded by what you learn. And then on the ice, you're going to be amazed and astounded with the magical transformation. That's the fun part. Vladimir saying, looking into pigeon toadness is interesting. A lot of sprinters and NBA players are pigeon toed. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Good to know. Hey, thanks for joining me today. I got to take off here. Great having you on. Hey, if you haven't subscribed, I presume you're subscribed, but subscribe if you're watching this uh, and you'll get notified when I'm live. Again, also leave a few comments on some like good times I could go live for you. Um, check out the check out the the seven day trial. 
It's either here or there in that card there. Um, and you will, you'll have fun. You'll, it'll be, it'll be a good change for you. And to my members who are on, thanks for watching. Get in touch. Send me those source code videos. Catch you next time.